We have Rick Rennell joining us. Rick, we're going to talk about, we're going to move our topic here in a second uh, to what's going on in Russia and get your expert advice on this. But I wanted your thoughts on the topic that we addressed at the top of this show, which is that the Wall Street Journal put out a poll saying essentially historic lows for people who consider themselves patriotic and also people that consider themselves almost linked uh, numbers wise with people who consider themselves religious or people of faith. We're seeing this sort of spiritual and American you know, rut that feels like that we are in as a nation. And clearly an administration doesn't change that. It's not like all of a sudden uh, people looked at Joe Biden, the liberals, because this was 50-50 split and said, yes, now I feel engaged. I feel patriotic uh, now. It feels like there has been such a decline and it's shocking. It's it's not that shocking when you look around because I think a lot of us feel it right now. We feel this sort of this sort of heaviness. But as someone who deals with politics, someone I also know as a faith, I just wanted to kind of get your feeling on this poll and what can we do? I mean, that's why I start looking at what can we do to help kind of turn this around to where people don't feel this way. Well, I love that you start by saying, what can we do? Because I think that's really the first thing is, is we do have a responsibility. We can't be surprised that over the last 20 years, our schools have been teaching our kids to hate America and to not concentrate on, you know, the basics. I mean, you look at test scores for our kids today and it's atrocious. We've allowed this to happen in our society. We've allowed our schools to become terrible. And I'm reminded of this conversation that I had with a world leader who once said to me, Rick, I don't know why you guys are so surprised in America that you have a generation of young people that hate your country. You've been teaching them to hate your country. You can't be surprised that all of a sudden they grow up and a 20 year old has been indoctrinated for all these years. So I, I think the solution is we've got to fight back. We've got to have people who don't just sit and listen to our broadcast, but actually do something. Some people listening may have to run for school board. You have to get involved. You have to not sit back and, and watch. I'll finish with this, Logan, is that, you know, when you look at first and second generation Americans, they love this country. The people who come here from another place who have experienced fascism or totalitarianism, they're at the front of the line saying that this is the great country. Our problem is with sixth, seventh generation white liberals who literally want to teach our kids to think that this place that we call America is a horrible place. It's the greatest country. And if you don't know that, you should travel more. I think that's a valid point. I, mean, I want to kind of throw it back when we say when we talk about first and second generation, we're talking about not just like your grandparents, we're talking about first and second generation people that are coming to this country right now. We're seeing that over and over. We're seeing that growing. That's why the, we're seeing the Hispanic community really rallying about a lot of conservative values. We're seeing a lot more people who were unexpected to be, uh, maybe by the left, unexpected to be uh, what you consider American patriots. What's going on, Will? Uh, Internationally. That's right, Rick. So over the weekend, Putin announced that he was going to station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, which happens to border a NATO member, Poland. And this comes off the heels of his summit with President Xi from China. Uh, what message is Putin sending here? We've watched the political crisis in Belarus for a while, and uh, it shouldn't surprise anyone who's really been watching that Putin is really pushing hard for uh, as many allies as he can. And he's, you know, look, he's, he's got energy issues over on people, which was why we were very concerned about having the Nord Stream 2 pipeline into Germany, into Europe, um, because once the Russians, once somebody like Putin gets leverage over you on energy, they can then say things like, uh, hey, we're gonna put our nukes in your country. And Belarus doesn't feel like they have much of a choice. And this is, um, you know, a, a terrible sign. We've certainly, you know, we need NATO members to pay their fair share. We need NATO members to be good NATO members before we start expanding this umbrella. I'm very concerned that the first reaction we have from so many European countries that are not paying their fair share is to say, oh, let's extend the NATO umbrella. Let's include other countries. And that just means the U.S. taxpayer has to pay more and more and more. And I think we've got to put an end to this and say, look, we didn't envision there would be a war in Europe, but there certainly was under Barack Obama and there was now under Joe Biden. And you've got to ask yourself, why did it skip? 
uh, Donald Trump? Why wasn't there a war? Why didn't Putin go on the offense during the Donald Trump years? And it's silly to think, oh, because he was getting everything he wanted, which is some people on the left. It means that he knows exactly what he can do to get away with this. And it's Great. weakness. You did bring up there was that that uh, time where it jumped between uh, the administrations and, and you talked about the members of NATO not paying their fair share. But just quickly here, as we kind of started talking about hope for the future in the in the beginning of this segment, I did want to ask you, how can we hold the administration's feet to the fire on this and try to stem some of this while we have we know at least uh, a couple years left with this administration? So uh, again, I think people have got to get involved. You can't just expect somebody else to do something and then expect the, our country to be saved. I mean, we're watching it really dissolve and, and it's heartbreaking. So I would say, get involved, figure out a way to support organizations or people who are tough, who are pushing back. I mean, clearly the weakness from the Biden administration um, has to be outed. We need transparency to show the American public just how weak they are. And that means aggressive organizations and people support politicians who are holding them to account, send them some money, uh, say some prayers for them, support them where you can, but also for organizations like ACLJ, where we're demanding transparency and we're using the power of the courts and the legal process to do it. Rick, appreciate you coming on today and uh, discussing this and also just that poll and everything that's happening uh, across our nation. We appreciate always when you come in.